In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for other people. There's an idea that continues to play in my mind lately. It's really short and simple, but it's really easy to remember. The concept is less them and more him. Less them and more him. Literally what that means is less of the worldly people and their ideas about God and more Jesus in our souls. You see, I believe in the Christian faith and a few other different types of faith, but they all do recognize Jesus as Lord. Even the Asian beliefs that I believe in have a recognition for him as a prophet, as a teacher, as a brilliant man, as someone who taught about love. <clears throat> I believe even the Dalai Lama recognizes Jesus as a forerunner to faith. But that's not my point. My point is that in life, we have choices to make, literally, about how we're going to conduct ourselves in relationship to another person's life. We have to truly ask ourselves, do we have rights in a person's life to damage their life, to put legal documentation on their name, to literally think we have the right to teach them a lesson in some way? If it's a litigious lesson, it's not a right. That is something that, unfortunately, the women of my family did not learn from my father like I did. You see, once you make a phone call to the wrong people, that life becomes interesting to those people. They will investigate, they will do all sorts of things, and they might just violate rights in the whole time and the whole process, proving that they are not on God's path. Less them and more him means literally taking every single decision we make and saying, is this the right way for me to go, Lord? Have I chosen the right person to be in love with, Lord? Have I literally picked, put the right kind of foods in my body so that I am slender and in good shape all my life to prevent illness and disease? Do I make the right kind of decisions in my workplace? Am I honoring other people and their gifts and skill sets and talents? Am I helping them to achieve all of their goals so the company prospers? Am I literally prospering myself or do I need to shift my job go to a new company, go to a new bank, literally get out of the field entirely or move into something that my soul will be fully served in. Sometimes in life, our paths are not about prosperity. They're more about love. They're more about people. They're more about honoring God, but it's not always a rich path. In my life, I love the things that I do to honor God. I have a prayer ritual, usually when I had a home. I had an altar that had beautiful things on it things that sadly some of which have been stolen from me out of my locked home and out of my locked storage units because people just don't practice less them and more him. Now in my life, I'm looking for how to practice less them and more him. It's been very difficult to tame my rage of late, my libidity, if you will, because of the thefts and the dishonoring of my legal name especially when it's been done by an out-of-bounds family member who clearly never read anything by Melanie Beatty about codependency. She has literally abused my life completely. She has violated my rights to fair trials. She has involved people in my life who had no right. And openly, she's put me in a position to have one or two choices now in life, to either go to jail, apparently, or go to a mental hospital where they will take away my rights to my own physical life and body just like she did before. And the man who did that to me literally destroyed my mind and almost destroyed my body because my cells do not tolerate certain chemicals like a man of science would think. Eventually that man will go to God and he will be totally abused by the satanic force. They will not tolerate him much more for his arrogance, for his rudeness, and for his destruction of so many lives in that institution where he works which sadly is a Catholic hospital. You see, men like that in power forget who's in power. They literally become more like them and less like him. They think they're doing things in God's name, but they're really not because God did not create a mental health care profession. Man created that. But I'm only going to say that once or twice because I feel that all people have rights to decide what will and won't be put literally into their body. When a judge takes over control of someone's life without talking to that individual, it is immoral, it is illicit, and I'm pretty sure it's illegal.
But we'd have to look at the laws in Indiana now, wouldn't we? We'd have to literally say, what right does this man have to do these things to someone against their wishes and against their will? If the person literally did something intentionally wrong, that's one thing. If they literally were trying to do something to catch the attention of someone or to simply catch up with someone because of something going on, that's another thing entirely. Now, I don't want to get off track on the idea of less them and more him, but in your life, what are you doing to make a difference? It doesn't matter if you believe in Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian in most people's minds because most people view spirituality as a personal thing. Something that we literally do on a Sunday, a Saturday, a Thursday night, a Wednesday evening, whatever, whenever your holy day is. And literally, we spend our lifetime hoping we are living in God's graces and in order under his blessings. We pray to him when we are feeling down. We ask him for help when we are losing our abilities. And sometimes we just get so outraged at him at all that we scream at the top of our lungs and we curse at him. I do that quite a lot, actually, because of the violence that I'm experiencing in my life, where clearly the people in my life are more them and less him. Now, when I talk about what's going on for me, I'm not asking you to do one thing for me. Literally, if you listened and you care, wonderful. If you listened and thought I could do something to help him to move forward in life, then fine. Give me a call, schedule an appointment, we'll talk about it. I can't promise I'm going to like every single idea you have because I have a path. And literally, I'm pretty clear on what that path is. And I'm pretty also clear on what's going to happen to the men who've lied about my life, who've been destroying my life, and who've been lying in legal records on my life, including the women. I'm pretty clear on what's going to happen to them because... When you get gifted in some way, when you literally do things in a certain way, when you submit a lot of things to God, you might just get insights into other people and other things. But that's my belief in faith. If I'm totally wrong, then I wouldn't be able to read people across the nations like I do. I literally have a, take a phone call almost every day with a woman in California who literally gets put in her place every single time we have a conversation. She gets off track in this idea of more them and less him. And I simply shift her thinking back to less them and more him. I remind her of what's important to her. I remind her of what's important in later in life. And I remind her how important God is in the world today. And how much she needs to instill that love of God and love of Jesus in her own children. In whatever manner in which is right for those children's soul whether it be native Indian lore, whether it be Harry Potter concepts, whether it be anything that will get a child or teenager excited about the concept of good versus evil, of doing the right thing versus doing the wrong thing, of loving people versus harming them, and versus of theft versus honoring people's rights to their own property, their own personhood, and their own paperwork. So in this marketing moment, in these magic and mayhem I'm really encouraging people to look at their life, look at their relationships, like I talk about in my book, Soul Keepers, and really look at what are we doing to honor the people and the souls that God puts in them. You see, you can't say a person doesn't have a soul. You literally can't. I think we've more than proven it scientifically. And openly, we know that people of faith tend to heal better than those who don't have them. We've, that's been proven long ago in research. But what I'm literally saying is that when we say we can't prove someone doesn't have a soul, we most certainly cannot prove what God has and hasn't put in that person's soul, especially if it's about love, life, or liberty. If it's something dark and dreary, then we're pretty sure it's not exactly all him. He does create people of the world like that to remind people of the earth what is and isn't right to do. I'm pretty sure about that concept, but if you don't believe me, spend some time talking with me on the telephone, and if I can prove I can read your little uh, life from not knowing you from Adam, then great. If I can't, then you didn't trust God enough, you didn't like me enough, and you openly didn't open yourself to truth, and that's okay too. Now, does that make me a charlatan trying to sell something? No. Does it literally say that I have to have validation for what I say to people? That's something that's hard for them because, as one gal told me, I talk a lot. No, it's not me talking. If it was me talking, I'd probably be a lot more short-winded, a lot more curt, a lot less tolerant, and openly, when I share something important, I sort of expect someone to literally write it down so I don't have to try and remember 
every little aspect of their life. When you are simply trying to talk more like God and less like them, you openly have to look at the situation and go, what's the most loving thing I can do in this moment that honors the soul of this individual, that honors the plan they have for their own life, that honors their abilities and their skill sets and their talents? You see, when we approach everyone like that, it transforms how we look at not only them, but our own selves. We start to believe that if we love other people this well, that we'll get loved in return like that. So you see, when I'm talking about less them and more him, I'm really talking about a position in life where we really look at what we're doing, what we're saying, how we're interacting with people, what our responsibilities are for that interaction completely, whether it was intentional or not, but practically. We make an impact on people's souls, hearts, and minds. And if we're doing anything to violate Lord God's rule of love God above all others, do not <clears throat> lord over people's lives, then maybe we're off God's path. This has been Blake Kenson of Blaze Communications talking about magic and mayhem, but more importantly, trying to encourage you all to be less them and more him.